Hi, this is Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group Weekly Update for the week ending January the 29th, 2022. Pretty, pretty scary looking week. Huh? Money started uh, pretty scary and uh, what has happened there, uh, they, they moved uh, all the indexes, major indexes. I gave you the parameters last week and last week's email. They all went down and, and tested uh, their, their major support levels, the lowest levels that I gave you. I gave you a couple levels. I kept thinking that they might stop, but they didn't. They went all the way down to the lowest. For, so for the NASDAQ, that was 13,000. And um, uh, for the uh, S&P, that was around 4,200. 4, okay, well, let, me, um, let me just go back up and give you what I see them uh, turning into. Uh, now, which uh, them being uh, the, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, and the uh, Russell 1000, okay, <clears throat> for the broader, uh, broader views of it, but they're starting to consolidate, trying to form at least a temporary bottom. I see uh, a, a temporary bottom just because of other economic indicators, but the Fed, as harsh as the hawkish as it sounded uh, midweek uh, uh, with Chairman Powell's address, it seems to be... Uh, broadening in, in, in not necessarily nuance but in scope as to look at uh, how this may work out because right now you got to remember Fed hasn't moved any rates they've just talked the market has has been what's moving the rate and you're starting to get the, the spread between the 2 and the 10 is really telling right now the markets uh, uh, is only 64 basis points this morning we have about just not just shy of two hours left in the trading day as I cut this video today and so what we've seen happening then is testing support on the NASDAQ that was 13,000 we see we see it uh, uh, coming back up and trying to, to scoot sideways. Test it again yesterday. Apple saved uh, the the day yesterday. Okay, certainly for the Nasdaq, really for the for the markets, probably the world, uh, with some spectacular earnings uh, across the board. Uh, who knew the Mac? Who knew the Mac was back? The Mac. I mean, nobody ever talks about the Mac anymore. It was it was twenty up earnings up twenty five percent on that. Not all right. Let me get back to the Nasdaq. So. Kind of moving sideways, what you're seeing is consolidating into a wedge. Uh, my concern is is that uh, there's not enough drive right now, given the backdrop, that if we go into a wedge and we don't stay range bound, then uh, if it's going to break out, it seems to be uh, more likely, uh, based upon the evidence available right now, that it would break to the lower side. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're... we're still in earnings earnings are coming in so we're staying right in the middle of a range and i'm going to give you the range here is around thirteen thousand on the low and uh, i'm around 14 1 14 2 uh on a high side that's the that's the nasdaq the s p um is more the same story but uh the range on on the s p on a high side we just say 4500 uh uh, 4540 roughly and in on the low 4235 and that 4200 is where 4250 real that's where I was calling last week uh, it really went down and tested that tested that uh, uh, pretty hard but we got a good bounce and it's been working that uh, ever since and let me go uh, tell you on the uh, on the uh, Russell 1000 uh, the high side on that that range is turning into these are all mimicking each other okay in one fashion or another it's kind of concerning, but that's what's happening. So 253 on, on, on the top, 235 on the bottom. If it breaks below any of those, so for the NAS, 13,000, for the S&P, 4250, 4235, uh, for the Russell 1000, 235, 230, you start seeing uh, movements below that, uh, you know, I don't see a compelling reason to be have any exposure uh, in any of these markets until until if that happens until we find out where that next uh, bottom is going to try to form. Right now, seems to be forming nicely, seems to be holding, may just move sideways and drift for a while until the Fed actually does something. I think the argument could be made, uh, geez, all they've done is talk and look at all of the chaos that they've created. Seems like it might be better just to rip off the Band-Aid, as Jared says, and just um, make, a, make that first uh, hike now and put an end to this, uh, this uncertainty and, and maybe things would, would move towards uh, straightening out sooner rather than waiting months, okay, and, and, and continuing the talk. So, uh, because the yield curve is flattening, the economy grew at almost 7%, okay, and the last uh, Q4 is what the data is showing. Sure, you've got some inflation figures that said 7%. That's not an offset. The economy is growing 
at, at, at that uh, in my book. And so that's a reason uh, to look better in the future. Uh, the inflation uh, break even on the five years is still 284, so or 278, 284, right in that range there. Uh, so, so on a five-year planning horizon, that's okay. Uh, again, let's stay in this. Uh, let's try to form a range at least, and uh, and let them come through. I don't think that in in the old days this that would be recessionary when the yield curves flatten like that. You get a 64 bit uh, spread on the 210. But in this market, because we're this is different, and so I think I think everything needs to short shortening the time horizon uh, on the viewpoint of everything and stop the uh, the wild uh, hair on fire knee jerk reactionary behavior. So wanted to talk to you a bit about uh, target date funds in this process because your target date funds, the way that those work, and a lot of people are in those. Okay, the way that those work right now, if you're further out. From retirement, so your target date's further down the road, you're higher exposure to equities. The good news is, is that you've got more time to recover from these losses. The bad news is you're suffering the brunt of these losses. You may well have more risk in those target date funds than what you realize, okay? Now, having said that, as you get closer to your target date, you're moving more into fixed income and cash. That may be more risky than what you realize. It sounded good when they first created these things, but in the bond markets to where they are right now, you may have more risk as much or more as what you have in the equities as you're getting closer to retirement, and that's the time you can least afford it. All right, so these are the problems that you have. I don't want to make this a long video. Next week, I'll have a little bit more time. I want to go into and develop that idea and that analysis of target date funds. Right now, I'm going to leave it at this. If you've got a bunch of those, call me. Let's go to work on your portfolio. Let's start analyzing this. See what opportunities you have uh, if you're not really matched up in, in your target date fund and your true risk tolerance and, and the true risk of that fund and what's going on. A lot of times those are hidden fees that are higher than what you would th imagine, okay? So alternatives, again, would be, you know, this uh, some, some buffered downside protection, uh, some... some uh, uh, Various alternatives that give you downside protection, protects uh, like your principal, but allows you to risk some of your gains for uh, uh, you know some caps on the upside potential there. In this market, uh, uh, the bears are coming, okay? I don't think that we're done with this. I'm not trying to predict the future. I'm just reading the data that's given me. And, uh, and, and, and until this changes right now, I think the downside protection on some of these, and, and you have to give up some liquidity and you have to make a time commitment, but that may well serve a lot of folks out there that are closer to retirement than, uh, the, than those that aren't. All right, give us a call. Uh, we're, we'd love to, uh, to help you. This isn't uh, scary to us. This is, uh, it's a challenge to everyone. But when you, when, you, when, you, when you love what you do, it's not really work, okay? It's going to be cold this weekend. Stay warm. Stay away from the Omicron. Stay happy. All right, that's the most important thing. Stay happy. Stay happy. I'll see you next week.